Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Hey, don't people usually make these recaps a bit earlier? Yes, I'm late, but I'm going to do it anyway. We're going to talk about how 2022 went for KDE, about hardware, KDE goals, organization, plasma, and applications, all of these five things. And obviously, let's start with hardware, and the big thing is the Steam Deck. Like, that was amazing. The Steam Deck was released, and the desktop mode was actually KDE, and the excitement and uses for the desktop mode exceeded even Valve expectations. So apparently we did a really good job with Plasma. That's how I would say it. Valve even hired some KD developers through Blue Systems. I've talked about that in a specific video, which means that the Steam Deck actually managed to make KD better as a whole, which is another pretty nice thing. In 2022, we also got a new KD laptop, the KD Slimbook. Or rather, we got a new version of the KD Slimbook, which I actually reviewed and it's just a amazing computer, not much to say about it. If you want that sentence to be made like in a 15 minutes long video, you can actually check out the review. We also got some more official Kubuntu computers by Kubuntu Focus, which is also something very nice. They also sent me a review unit, which I've reviewed, so you can check that one out as well. And amazingly enough, after the review, they told me that if I work for them for some things, they would let me keep the computer. So I'm using it right now to edit this video, which is also super nice. It works amazingly well. Finally, things are looking very good for 2023 as well, because there are at least two tablets being developed and they will likely support Plasma Mobile. So if you want, you know, tablets with Plasma in it, you can get them. The first one is obviously the Pine Tab. We previously had it ready, but now it's been reiterated and it's so much better. And also in theory, we should see the release of the Juno computer, which is being developed actively. So lots of new hardware and Tuxedo actually decided to switch to KD Plasma on all of their machine. They actually made their own Tuxedo S, which is a distribution based on KD Plasma, which will bring Plasma to even more computers, which is amazing. Let's now talk about the KD goals. Now, previously we had three goals and then in October 2022 with Academy, the KD Academy, where we voted for new goals. So now we have three new goals. So let's talk a bit about the old ones and the new ones. Of course, the best one of the old ones is the consistency goal because that's mine, but I'll talk about that later. We had KDE is all about applications, which actually managed to bring a lot of KDE applications to a lot of new stores and not just like Flatpaks or Snaps for Linux users, but also the Play Store for Android users. As an example, Krita was there and it got a lot of downloads and also on the Windows Store for Windows users. And this is super important because if you want people to switch to Linux, and I do actually, it's going to be much easier to make the switch if they are already using the application that they would use if they switch to Linux. So that's a pretty big deal. Then we have Wayland, which also made a lot of progress. As an example, do you remember I was talking about the KDE Slimbook? Well, Slimbook has decided to now ship it with Wayland enabled by default which really speaks to the fact that a lot of things that were previously showstoppers aren't anymore. And in fact, there's even discussions to default to Wayland for KD Plasma 6. And of course, I mean, it won't work as nice as X11 for everybody, but it now works for a lot of more people. And in fact, I mean those people. I now use Wayland and previously, before 2022, I just couldn't. So that's amazing. And these were the old goals. Again, I'll get to consistency later, but October Academy elected new goals and everything went very smoothly. There were lots of proposals, lots of very good ones, and then the voting went smoothly and then we just announced the new ones, which was very well handled. The first one of the new ones is accessibility, which is great because KD actually needs it and not just for like a subset of people, but if you like KD Plasma and you want KD Plasma to be used in more and more companies or maybe organizations, then it has to adhere to some accessibility standards. And if we don't offer good accessibility, people are not going to use KD Plasma. So it's amazing that we selected this goal, in my opinion. Then we have sustainable software from an ecological point of view. And this was actually already underway. In fact, Ocular was awarded the Blue Angle, Angle 
certification of an eco application, which is also pretty cool. And the work probably won't stop there. In fact, still at Academy, we add a cake with KD eco logo on it to have fun and, uh, you know, be happy about that. <laughs> Finally, the third one of the new goals is automate internal processes, originally called professionalize KD, which was a better title. <laughs> now, this is my favorite and it's just this is my favorite actually, and it's just a starting off. I've talked about that a lot. So if you want a quick summary, it's about making sure that we can automate and systematize everything that we can. So like having some wiki in place as an example to tell you how to do things with a standard pr procedure instead of having to reinvent the wheel every time you do something, but also do some things automatically. As an example, you could close very, very old bugs that require information si since years ago automatically. That's something you could do. And finally, we have consistency, which I left last because I want to talk a bit more about this. That is, I let the consistency go and I also did some cool stuff aside from the consistency goal. Now, the goal was making sure that there is a consistency in design as an example, so that applications looks very similar to kickoff to make a stupid example and also behave in similar ways, but also, of course, applications between other applications, especially considering that we have like Kurigami and Qt widgets applications. And that was part of the goal. Instead, as my personal things, I implemented a bunch of stuff. As an example, the floating panels, but I've also tried my best to start bug fixing as most things as possible. And for a couple of weeks, I even managed to do like one bug fix every day, which was pretty hard and really I'm trying my best to bring in new features, maintain them and also bug fix existing bugs. I also do other stuff like managing the wallpaper workflows and also I do some kind of promotions, I help write announcement and videos, all of these things I do. But I'm not hired by KD, that's the whole point. I am hired by you people who donate to my channel. So I'm trying to pay off everything that I do with a 700 monthly euros goal and it's quite hard to reach it every time. So we are just starting off January. It's going to be a tough task and I ask you if you can please chip in something that will allow me to keep developing for KD Plasma in 2023 as well. That would be amazing. I have like Patreon, Ko-Fi, Paypal, LibrePay, YouTube Super, anything, anything is going to be amazing. Now let's talk about organization and infrastructure for KD. There has been very big organizational changes. Now, as a quick reminder, there's KD, which is the community of people who work and develop for KD, volunteers mostly. And then there's the KDE EV, which is an actual organization, non-profit organization registered in Germany, if I'm not mistaken, that represents the KDE community from a legal point of view, because you also need that to, you know, collaborate with hardware makers to make a, an example. KDE EV started actually hiring developers. Previously, we didn't do any of that. Developers working on KDE were either hired by external companies such as Blue System or volunteers like me. Previously, people hired by KDE EV were only hired to do things not related to actually developing. As an example, people were hired to do documentation or to do promotion. So who did KDE actually started hiring? Well, firstly, we now have a package engineer, which of course helps for stuff like the KDE is all about the apps goal because you actually have to package applications, obviously. Next up, we should soon have a software engineer to help out with KDE as a whole and KDE frameworks, QD, that kind of stuff. And KDE is still looking for an integration, hardware integration engineer. So. I think that if you're interested in this uh, job application, you can actually send in your documents, curriculum, that sort of stuff. Another big change is in the board. So as a quick recap, KDE EV inside of it has a board of roughly six people that actually, you know, make most of the decisions and meet regularly to discuss matters regarding the KDE EV. So it's pretty important who is inside of the board. The new join is Nate Graham and I could explain to you who he is, but if you don't know where have you lived for the past three years at least, we can kind of gather what direction will Nate push the board towards by reading like his blog posts and opinions. 
and in my opinion it's a good direction so nice by the way talking about nate and nate's blog post this video is actually quite inspired from a blog post of his which is you know how 2020 was for kitty but on his blog post so if you prefer art articles to videos on or if you want to see a different viewpoint because this video is my viewpoint you can check out his blog link in the video description if i don't forget now to support this hiring stuff we also needed some more money which means a better fundraising platform now in the previous years kitty platform for getting donations similarly i mean to how I need donations to go on. KD also needs donation, and you can also donate to KD. But it was kind of hard to do that, especially if you want to make a recurring donation of a certain amount. You couldn't do that. That has changed in 2022, luckily. And we even managed to do a couple of fundraising campaigns for KD as a whole and for KD in Live in particular. I think that in total, we managed to raise about 40,000 euros, which is a lot. So it seems clear that this new approach is working really well. Yay! There has been other changes in infrastructure too. As an example, Bugzilla improved a lot in its organizations. And I think that last year there was also the redesign of Bugzilla. So now not only it looks much better compared to before, but it's also much easier to find where to file bugs for. And you know, this is scary. People need to have an easy time reporting bugs. Also, as a fun fact, there's now the need to use a two-factor authentication for all developers who want to access to the GitLab repositories of KDE, which is nice, makes KDE safer. And also soon we, we should finally see a better KDE forum, but that isn't done yet. Let's finally switch to the hot stuff that is Plasma. Get it? Plasma hot? Never mind. This year was awesome for Plasma. We actually had many releases that were like super big and take 5.25 as an example, that was incredible. So what's new? Let's try to make a quick recap of everything that was added. First of all, KDE is now much more colorful because we are able to get the accent color directly from the wallpaper and we can apply that accent color as a tint to Windows, which is like super cool. If you haven't tried that setup up, you need to. There's also now touchpad gestures, which is actually what brought me back to Kerry after trying GNOME in the first months of the year, because I just couldn't live without them. And there's also new touch screen gestures, which is amazing. Previously, they weren't as good. And now all of this is one-to-one, -one, which means you move the finger on your screen or touchpad and it will follow it. But there's also new, actually, uh, gestures that we hadn't before. So miles ahead compared to 2021. We also have the hover view, which looks so much better compared to previous uh, desktop effects. It's a bit like Parachute, if you know that, or I, I don't know, like Chrome OS Virtual Desktops Manager. I don't know. It, it, it just looks awesome and you can even search within it and a search will at the same time filter windows. It works so nicely. Yay. There's also now tiling built in in Kwin thanks to Marco and you can see to understand how it works because it's not like full tiling out of the box, but it's more like fancy zones in windows if you know what that is. I don't actually, I just repeat that sentence and hopefully other people understand it. I've done an entire video talking about that. If you're interested, I showcase all of it um, functionalities. Then we have floating panel, which I think is a nice feature that I managed to implement. So I'm very happy. And again, if you want me to keep doing stuff in 2023, please chip in a donation, I need that. There's also been a refactor of multi-monitor logic. Now it works completely different compared to before, and that will only land actually in 5.27, which is scheduled in a couple of months from now. So you should see a big improvements from that side very soon, and it has been implemented in 2022. When you select a new global theme and you, and you apply it, you can actually choose what elements of the global theme to apply, which is super important because previously, whenever you switch to a new global theme, everything would be reset. And uh, maybe there were some particular configurations that you did not want to change. That made actually switching to a new global theme something risky that you quite didn't know how it would turn out. Now it's much safer. Finally, you can resize dialogues, which is 
also great especially because it allows you to do some custom setups such as sidebars and how do you do a sidebar i should have a clip going on right now that shows it so that's pretty cool Finally, the last part of the video, applications. So what's new in applications for Kitty? Well, of course, there are so many applications, we just can't go through all of them, but there are some that changed in particular that I think it's worth mentioning. Firstly, I think that the biggest application that changed the most in a good way is Kate and Kwrite, which is actually now the same application. Previously, there were two different ones. Now Kwrite is just Kate, but with a different uh, configuration, which is pretty cool. Now, it would be impossible to list all of the new features, but very roughly as a summary, we've got multi-cursors, hamburger menu, settings as a page, and you can even search within it that's so cool. You're able to display diffs like git diffs. The git workflow has been improved significantly. And finally, there's a new welcome page. All of this made Kate like, I'm gonna say it like this, so it shouldn't be controversial. But in my opinion, Kate is the best. Actually, let me rephrase that. In everybody's opinions, Kate is the best text editor. There's no doubt. There's no even ID. Let's throw ideas in like, Kate is the best, that's it. Anyway, many other applications were also ported to the welcome page, which if you don't like, you can turn off, so don't worry. As an example, we have Ocular and Arc, and also many applications were ported to using the hamburger menu, which you can also disable if you don't like it, and it's even off by default depending on the application. As an example, console. We also have an entire rework of how Spectacle works and looks, which is amazing. Like, it's probably the second most improved application after Kate. You can see it in a video because, funnily enough, I have videos for everything going on at KDE these days. But that one hasn't um, been shipped yet to users, so you will receive it soon, I think. There's also a lot of very young applications that I think not only improved a lot, but made um, are now more are now much more unacknowledged. That is, a lot of people know about them and previously didn't and use them. So they're getting the status of big, serious KDE applications, which is not always easy to gain when you start from nothing. As an example, I think that calendar has improved a lot and it's a more compelling option by the day. And there's also lesser known apps like Tokodon, which also has just pushed a release, which is like super duper awesome. It's a client for Mastodon, by the way. And then, I don't know, there's applications like NeoChat, who holds improved by implementing encrypted chat features. And there's also been a UI revamp. I think it's a client for Matrix, but I might be wrong. And finally, there's more old school KDE applications that also improved, like Dolphin got a selection mode, which looks pretty cool. And Gwenview got ability to annotate images and change brightness, contrast, and gamma, which is super cool. Now, I've been talking for uh, 45 minutes straight. That's a lot. So I will just shut up at this point. Hopefully you liked the video and let me repeat that again. If you're able to chip in a donation links in the video description, that would be awesome. But if you can't, you can't, that's no big deal. Thanks everybody for following along. And as always, in a couple of days, I will have a new cool video, probably. Let's hope so at least.